Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial and Midnight. My name is Heath, and it's time for another thrift store video. I've got a stack here beside me. It was in the thumbnail stack uh, of uh, movies, music, and books. Three things. Uh, and uh, so this is another one of those videos that it kind of has, it's a conglomeration of multiple thrift store visits, like when I'm at work. Uh, I work, you know, mobile. I'm different. I'm in different places, so sometimes I'll just shoot into a thrift store and see if they got anything. Uh, there's no footage from inside a thrift store. Uh, it's been kind of crazy lately, and that just wasn't in the. It wasn't a possibility for me uh, for this video. But uh, I do have a quite an impressive stack of stuff here. So uh, let's just get right into it. You guys want to start? You tell me. You want to start with the movies, the music, or the books? It sounds like more of you want the movies, so <laughs> it's like Blue's Clues. Do you guys know where the movies are? You do? Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's start with the movies. I grabbed, this is, I was going to say this isn't a movie. It is a movie, but it's a TV movie. This is uh, one of the Jesse Stone movies, Tom Selleck, Mr. Magnum P.I. himself. Um, Mr. Mustache Magnum P.I. himself. Uh, in uh, Benefit of the Doubt, I am slowly but surely, slowly but surely building my uh, Tom Selleck, Jesse Stone TV movie collection. I don't remember. I think there's nine. I think there's nine. I think I have seven of them now. I, don't, don't quote me. Um, but there's a few that I don't have. But hey, there was all of them that I didn't have. And I've managed to piece all of them together so far from thrift stores and yard sales. So I don't know what it is about these movies that people buy them. And they're like, I don't want to keep that. Because uh, I think Tom Selleck is great. And these movies are uh, pretty cool. So based on the bestsellers by Robert B. Parker, right? The Jesse Stone. Uh, let's see if I'm right. Robert B. Parker. Yes. Robert B. Parker's Jesse Stone books. You guys, this is a weird one. Um, I'm, so if Brie was here, she would speak this very eloquently because she's a Spanish instructor. Uh, but I'm just going to say this is uh, Cantado Bajo, Cantado, mm, Cantado Bajo la, la Lluvia. Cantado Bajo La Lluvia. I sound like I'm uh, the monorail announcer on uh, at, at Disney World, like, Please stand clear of the doors. Paratenga, yo, like whatever. Uh, this is Singing in the Rain, but it's a Region 2 version. This was at a thrift store, you guys. Uh, I saw it. I did not realize it was Region 2. I don't own Singing in the Rain. Or is it just singing? Is it singing or singing? Singing in the Rain. I don't own it. I've never seen it. I've always needed to. I, I want to. I've needed to. We just haven't had a chance to do that dance yet. Uh, but I saw this in the thrift store. I was like, whoa, and it's like a Spanish version, right? I guess it came from Spain, Region 2 Spanish writing. Uh, so uh, I grabbed it for like, it was like a buck 50, might've been two. Uh, but that's kind of a curiosity. Uh, and it's in an old Warner Warner Brothers snap case. I got, I, like, I can't believe it. I've talked about this on the channel before, but I can't believe I've developed nostalgia for these old cardboard snap cases from Warner. Because uh, for a while, you know, for the first few years of DVD, five, six years of DVD, it was Snapcase City, baby. And uh, they were the Warner Brothers was the only, they're like, we're burrowing in on this paper, this cardboard Snapcase. Uh, we don't want your plastic. We're doing cardboard. And then eventually they adapted to what became the industry standard. But I still have this weird affection now. I didn't like them at the time. Because they were easily damaged. And it's paper, right? But now I'm like, eh, they, I kind of miss them. I don't miss them. I have nostalgia for them. Two different things. Uh, you guys, I grabbed Some Kind of Wonderful. I believe this is either out of print or it's... Uh, I, you know, maybe it's not out of print. It's just kind of one of those more rare... Um, uh, John Hughes, uh, so this was written by John Hughes. It was produced by John Hughes. He did not direct it. This is one of those John Hughes movies that he, he was very involved in, but he didn't actually direct it. Um, been a long, long, long time since I've seen this movie. I think the last time I saw this movie was probably 25 to, yeah, probably about 25 years ago on, uh, just broadcast television on Fox on Saturday uh, our, back before cable was like huge, back before everything was owned by just like five companies, uh, my local Fox affiliate did a Saturday series, I believe, uh, called The Breakfast Club. And it was uh, like kids, like uh, I don't even know if they were high school. I guess they were high school, uh, high school age kids that would host a movie 
It's, it was like Saturday at 11, which you got to wonder. What, I guess teenagers are probably home at Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, they're not out doing their thing yet, but uh, they. Th I think that's maybe the last time I saw this. So uh, this is not on Blu-ray. Maybe maybe somewhere else in the world, but I don't think this is on Blu-ray anywhere. But guys, this is a classic. Check out Leah Thompson, uh, Eric Stoltz. So hey, we have Eric Stoltz, who was the original Marty McFly before he got uh, ceremonial, ceremoniously ejected from Back to the Future because it just wasn't a great fit. And um, and Leah Thompson, who would be Marty McFly's mother. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Is this, uh, what year is this? 87. So this would have been after, after all of that drama from Back to the Future. But uh, very happy to have that on DVD. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of a rarity, I guess. This is Tarzan 2. Tarzan, Tarzan, whatever you want to say. This is Tarzan 2. Um, and... I don't think I've ever seen this. I remember. I remember for a while there was like wasn't there an animated series uh, in the early two thousands like a Tarzan uh, kids show on the Disney Channel. I, I could be wrong, but I think maybe that's even where this is from. Uh, in fact, now that I'm talking about this, it seems like maybe I've picked this up before, but it's not in my database. Um, so I'm gonna have to check that. Here's the thing, though. So. Uh, Disney puts out these Blu-rays now, like The Hunchback of Notre Dame has The Hunchback 1 and it has The Hunchback 2. You're like, there was a Hunchback 2? Yes. Uh, Pocahontas 1, Pocahontas 2. There's another, like, um, there's Aladdin sequels. Like, they, they put out these things, these multi-movie sets, I guess. We'll have, like, The Thing and then, like, the sequel version of that sometimes. But uh, Tarzan is not, uh, Tarzan 2 Tar I'm saying it all over the place. Tarzan is Tarzan one on Blu-ray does not have Tarzan two as a special feature. So I think the only way you can get this, I guess this is maybe out of print now. I don't know, uh, but I didn't have it. It was like a buck fifty or something like that. I was like, I'm gonna grab that because I'm always up for grabbing the lesser. Listen, you're always gonna be able to find Tarzan on VHS or DVD. Like those pop up all the time. This is the kind of thing that I don't know that we're gonna, you know, like the Lady and the Tramp two, Scamps Adventure stuff like that. The 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 direct-to-video uh, sequels, those are the ones that are less purchased. They're a little bit more rare. I'm not saying that they're valuable. I don't buy things because they're valuable. Just saying maybe they're not uh, as sought after. Maybe they're not as prolific in the wild. Um, let's talk about Starsky and Hutch. So I saw this movie in the theater when it came out back in, what was this, 19, 2004. I thought it was earlier than that. Um, and I thought it was okay. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson were very funny. Uh, and then uh, I think I might have even had the original DVD version of it. But um, I, I got rid of it long, long ago. And I really haven't thought about the movie since. But here's the thing. I've kind of become an original Starsky and Hutch fan. And uh, it bothers me now as, as the old man now. Like, I'm not an old man. But, you know, guys, like, I'm, I'm older than, uh, you know, I'm old. <laughs> I'm, I'm old enough. And it bothers me now when move that we have movie parodies because this is essentially a parody of Starsky and Hutch. Um, chips, the Dak Shepard chips. Like I love Dak Shepard. I don't really like the take on chips. Like I, I like like let's do it straight. The Charlie's Angels version, the movie version of Charlie's Angels. Like not that those things were infallible, like the shows that they were based on. Not that they were like pure or infallible or anything like that. Or just like, oh, they're so great, you don't touch them. They're like Shakespeare. They're like Hammett. No, I don't necessarily mean like that. But there's a purity to them. There's an earnestness to them. They were, they weren't, they weren't trying to be parodies at their time. And this whole wave, we've had like a 20 year wave of these things, and we still get them. Baywatch, another perfect example. Baywatch had some comedy in it. Baywatch wasn't a comedy, but that movie. Totally a comedy, and it doesn't work. Uh, I did a review for Baywatch, the uh, the movie, at SerialAtMidnight.com. By the way, Baywatch is now streaming. The TV series is now streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, HD restorations, it looks beautiful. There's some of the original music and what they could not recover from the original uh, music. They've done like hours and hours of new music to sound kind of like the original music. Lots of restoration work. We're talking about Starsky and Hutch. Um, I don't love this movie, but as the Starsky and Hutch enthusiast like I feel like I need to have it and this did just come out on blu-ray courtesy of Warner archive and I will probably end up picking that up at some point down the road but it's not a huge priority this was a dollar fifty a uh, dollar fifty is the right price so I will add this to my collection you know it's got the car it's got 
it's it's okay. We, we, there's probably a video uh, about remakes, A Team, uh, not not even remakes, uh, movie versions of classic television series. Uh, there's probably a video in there because they rarely, if ever, work. Sometimes, what is it like? You know, like uh, once in a blue moon, one comes along that's actually it's okay, um, and that's that's about what you get usually. It's like, well, it was okay. That's the best you can hope for with a lot of stuff. Is well, it's okay. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, I grabbed Annie Hall on DVD. I don't have Annie Hall. Here's the thing. I've never seen Annie Hall. I know that's a crime. I know this is one of the uh, the patron saints of 70s cinema. Here's the thing. Woody Allen really bothers me. Even if the stuff about the, you know, the accusations, about Sunni, even all of that, we would put all that on the table. Because I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, he just bothers me. His whole delivery. Oh, but you, you know. Oh, but I just. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a thing. Oh, that whole thing. It's first of all, it's a gimmick. It's an act. That's not who he really is. If you see him, like he was a stand-up comedian. He pop up on like the Dean Martin show, the Johnny Carson show, stuff like that. It's an act. It's a performance. I don't like it. I don't like that thing that he's doing, uh, especially knowing that it's a performance. Um, but uh, that's. But perhaps I've overshared, but I'm just being honest. Like that, that whole gimmick doesn't bother me. But I feel like as a movie fan, I owe it to myself to watch this movie and to try to put some of that stuff away. Because if nothing else, we've got Diane Keaton being adorable and uh, and quirky and like eccentric and all that stuff. It's kind of a movie that you need to see, even if you don't necessarily want to see it. You need to be in on the conversation on some of these things. And sometimes that's why you pick something up for a dollar fifty. Um, another thing you pick up for a dollar fifty is Johnny Cash. What is it? I Walk the Line. Now, this looks super cheap. It looks unauthorized. I haven't watched it yet, but it's got like about 12 songs, about 12 Johnny Cash songs on here. I don't know what the source of it is. I've done zero research since I picked this up. Uh, I just haven't had the time to really delve into this. Uh, and the thing is, like, Johnny Cash songs are like two minutes long. So, 12 songs, like, it's like a half an hour worth of content. Uh, but uh, this is interesting. I, I'm never going to pass up Johnny Cash any, like, unless I already have it. And even then, I might still buy it just to have spares because I, I love Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is one of the uh, he's one of the giants for me. So, uh, member of the Highwaymen with Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Waylon Jennings, that '70s outlaw country music movement. Even though Johnny Cash was never really outlaw country, uh, I think we could definitely say he's an outlaw. Um, Last of the movies, Chuck Norris, A Force of One. I have an extensive Chuck Norris collection. I don't think I've ever seen A Force of One. I think this is one of those that um, it's either not readily available right now or it's... There's something up with this movie. Maybe there's a distribution thing. I don't feel... Like, this is a movie you don't see a lot. You don't see it in, in a lot of places. And I don't think it ever came to Blu-ray. Maybe it did. Um... Again, I haven't really researched it because now I have this. Uh, but it is a full screen presentation, which is a boo, you know, full screen boo. Um, but And by full screen, they don't mean like it fills your 16 by 9 television. They mean it's like a cropped square image. Um, but it's got a, the making of documentary, How America Changed Cinema Forever. That seems like a tack on from something else. Uh, I don't know though, but I love these like late 70s, early 80s Chuck Norris movies. Like between the uh, the Bruce Lee stuff and who am I kidding I love all of Chuck Norris's stuff I, I we'll have to do a Chuck Norris video because I have ah, dozens probably upwards of 15 or 20 uh, Chuck Norris movies on DVD and Blu-ray big fan of Chuck Norris uh, so anytime I get a chance to add it to my Chuck Norris collection woohoo uh, let's do books and then we'll save music for the end it's a very small book haul uh, I picked up Shane the paperback you guys this is a very very slim, very tiny paperback. Is it even a hundred and it's a hundred and one hundred and twenty pages? Uh, this is like one of those uh, bathroom reads. <laughs> you just knock it out in a couple of sessions. Knock it out in a couple of sesh. Just take it in there. Read about Shane. Classic movie. Never read the book. Um, so this was dirt cheap. I think this was fifty cents. So I'm excited to add it to my collection. It's got. Uh, it's got a dedication in there. You know, I used to avoid books and, and media that had dedications and writing on the inside, stamps of locations. Now I actually love those things. And I think given a choice between clean 
or dedicated or stamped, I'm probably going to go with the dedicated or stamped because it has a story. It's been lived in. It's kind of like that cassette tape thing. If you guys have seen my massive cassette tape haul video, uh, and there's a lot of handmade mixtapes in that lot that I purchased for, I don't even remember what it was. I think it was $10 for like 100 tapes or something like that. Um, it, they have history. They they have walked a mile, you know. Uh, I've been buying a lot of pulp stuff lately, and I've, it's amazing where they come from. They have stamps from like Canada, uh, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Like it's, it's cool. These things come from all over the world. So this book at one point belonged to Benji H. So I have Benji's book now, and... And this is the last stop for that one until until I'm gone and then it will go to somebody else. Uh, this is cool. I haven't really had a chance to flip through this yet either. This is called The Book of Lists Horror. Now, I've been criticized for how I say horror. I say horror. Uh, but you know what? Some people are like, horror? What's that? You mean horror? But uh, I recently heard an interview with Joe R. Lansdale, the prolific and very famous uh, writer, creator of Happen Leonard, uh, Bubba Hotep. Uh, and he says horror. Uh, he's from Texas, and he says horror, thriller, and horror. So I, hey, it's pick your poison, man. We could say it a multiple, a, a multitude of different ways. Uh, but the the people that make these lists. So this is a book of lists about the horror genre. And just flipping through it, I was like, oh man, these books are uh, these lists are incredible. Normally, I'm not into lists because. I can make my own list, right? Like if we're just doing lists, like I'll make my own. I don't need your list, not you guys, but I don't need someone to sell me a list. But uh, the contributors to this made me sit up and take notice. I'm trying to find, okay, all new exciting collection features, Steve, okay, Stephen King, Eli Roth, Ray Bradbury, and more with an introduction by Gahan, Gahan, Gahan Wilson, I don't know. Uh, but I was flipping through it and I saw, see, now I'm trying to, to replicate that magic for you guys and show you some of the people who wrote lists. Uh, Edgar Wright was one of them. Okay, whose list is this? Let's just sample a list. Uh, this is Tim Sullivan's 13 favorite splat stick moments and they come from uh, 2000 Maniacs, I Drink Your Blood, Theater of Blood, Dawn of the Dead, Motel Hell, An American Werewolf in London, Return of the Living Dead, Reanimator, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and Toxic Avenger. Oh, they keep going. Evil Dead 2, Dead Alive. Have you guys ever seen Peter Jackson's Dead Alive? It's an endurance test. It's it's <laughs> it's crazy. Slither. Uh, yeah, that's that's cool. Oh, James Gunn. James Gunn's 19 favorite reasons God made humans so squishy. And then it's uh, like scenes, like his favorite scenes from certain horror movies. So these are creative lists, and the idea behind these is to get get you to watch more horror. And uh, I'm up for watching more horror, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to read that book. It was a cool book. Uh, it was like a buck fifty, and I was like, "Yeah, I was coming home with me." Also from the same place, probably from the same collection, uh, is this book of Playboy interviews. This is volume two, uh, and this comes from I'm going to say the '70s. Uh, oh, this edition was printed in 1982. Now this has no this has no pictures. This is just text. This is just interviews. Because here's the thing, and this is interesting. Playboy, obviously notorious, famous, infamous, I don't know, for the naked ladies. Um, but at one point in time, Playboy was actually very well known for the articles. And the joke would be, well, I read it for the articles. Uh, and I don't know that anybody ever really bought that excuse, but they did have wonderful articles. They were at the pinnacle of a certain kind of media journalism. They had Rolling Stone at the very top, I would say. Uh, maybe, you know, we, we, now we have like, we have Esquire, we have Time Magazine, we have all these things that are like cherished, uh, uh, beacons of journalism for media. Uh, but I would say in the sixties and the seventies, even into the eighties, it was Rolling Stone and it was Playboy. There was a whole book, I've got it, of, uh, John Lennon's interviews with Playboy throughout the seventies. And you can kind of chronicle his career through these interviews, like what he was going through. And they were always like less censored, uh, more candid, more honest. You guys, the interviews in here, uh, Salvador Dali, Roman Polanski. Eh, that's an interesting one. Uh, Ian Fleming, the creator and the writer of James Bond. Uh, Alex Haley, William F. Buckley Jr., Johnny Carson, Groucho Marx, Jane Fonda, G, G Gordon Liddy, uh, Henry Fonda. That's the one that I'm really curious about is Henry Fonda. So these are like deep long 
very, I shouldn't say those words in relation to Playboy. Th this is very in-depth journalism with these celebrities, with these actors and these uh, people in the pop culture landscape. So I'm probably going to have to track down volume one and see if any volumes came out after that. Um, so uh, let's move into music and let's get us out of here because this turned into a long video because I just keep on talking. I picked up a bunch of CDs, uh, went to a thrift store really quick. Uh, I'll tell you the full story. I was driving my wife home from a root canal and we passed a thrift store and I was like, do you mind if I run in that thrift store? Because that's, that's the worst. That is literally the worst. But I was like, we're never over here on this side of town. You mind if I run in this thrift store really quick? That's one reason that there's no video footage in this because I was in a hurry. Uh, and she was very cool about it because Brie is awesome. You guys know Brie is, uh, is the best. So I picked up Augustana. Uh, this is uh, All the Stars and Boulevards. Augustana, if you haven't heard him, kind of a Americana, uh, alternative kind of thing. I don't know that I love it, but I like it, I, especially some of their songs. They, I think they have some good stuff. Uh, Johnny Cash. Someone donated one of the Johnny Cash American recordings uh, on CD to a thrift store. And this this blows my mind. I don't understand. Like I said, I'm never going to pass up Johnny Cash. I have the box set of all of his Columbia stuff. Uh, that he did with, uh, you know, all of his from the 60s, well, actually from the 50s. It starts with the Sun recordings and it goes all the way up uh, through when he was terminated by Columbia. That's right. Columbia fired Johnny Cash from their label because he just wasn't selling anymore. So he went with Rick Rubin and reinvented himself. Uh, and that's the American recordings. And these are uh, great. They're very stripped down. Uh, again, there's probably a larger conversation to be had there, but this is some great stuff from one of are musical legends. Brian Setzer Orchestra, Vavoom. Uh, I have this digitally, but now I have it physically as well. Check out the art. You guys know I love my mid-century tiki stuff. I love my mid-century kitschy culture. Uh, and I love the art on this. I love Brian Setzer. Stray Cats are back together, reunited, doing a, doing a tour. They're actually not coming anywhere close to me, which is kind of a bummer. Maybe they'll come, maybe they'll stay together. They're putting out an album. I'll be talking about it here. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Pisces Iscariot. Never super got into Smashing Pumpkins, but my wife loves them, and I think these are another one that she has a lot of digitally, but we're in a place now where, hey, you get the hard copy for a dollar, we're getting the hard copy. Uh, so on that note, we also picked up Gish. I believe it's Gish, right? Um, and I thought there was one more Smashing Pumpkins. I guess there was not. Okay, no more Smashing Pumpkins. I, uh, I grabbed Keen. Uh, I used to like, I've, I've only heard the first album by Keen. I liked it. It's kind of that British navel gazy thing. Uh, kind of emo, kind of sad, melancholy. I don't know, happy. I don't know. It's melodic. It's very melodic music from, uh, from the UK. Uh, I believe they're from the UK. Um, but I've never heard this. A buck. I'll give it a shot. I'll sample for a dollar. Uh, Radiohead, Hail to the Thief. This was the last, I think this was the last Radiohead album that I purchased. And then at some point I got mad at Radiohead because they continued to turn more and more into computers. And I think I sold all my Radiohead stuff off. So at this point I have Pablo Honey and now I have uh, Hail to the Thief physically. I do have digital copies because I'd ripped everything. Uh, but uh, I want, again, want the physical copy. This is one of their last, in my opinion, this is one of their last uh, accessible albums. I kind of regret what happened to Radiohead and I understand that the people that have followed them continue to get deeper and deeper into that love of Radiohead but for me it just felt like a dare. It felt like they were playing chicken with their audience to see who would back down first. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys have a convincing argument that Radiohead has, Radiohead has gotten better. Let me know. I would love to hear it. And then the last three are of a piece. They are Bex Odele. Uh, which I think we have already, but I, I, I grabbed a copy just to make sure. Um, Midnight Vultures from Beck as well. And last but not least, uh, Sea Change by Beck. So somebody was just done with Beck. Or they ripped them and they were like, I got my digital copy. I don't I don't need the physical. Uh, I don't want this art. Yeah, chuck it. Does this guy, does, does this remind you guys of Michael Sarah and Scott Pilgrim at all? Have we ever seen Michael Sarah and Beck in the same place at the same time? So all I'm saying, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking if we've ever seen them in the same place at the same time. Because I don't know that I have. Um, <laughs> so that's the thrift store haul. It's kind of, a, it's a decent haul, right? Guys, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out and talking some thrifting. I appreciate you guys so very much. So take care. And until next time, I will catch you later.